Oh, that... Thank you. Okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone. I hope uh, I hope uh, you're enjoying this uh, this uh, sugya, which is uh, a, a quite quite a dense sugya with a, with a lot going on. Um, I caught the tail end as I joined. I think I think someone I think it might be Ned were talking about making a chart of. Uh, I think that's what you're talking about. Different uh, different uh, opinions in this, and and absolutely, I mean, it's it's a sugya where where charts are definitely needed. It's it's quite tough. Um, but let's let's try and uh, for this stage work our way through for through the um, the shot of the sugya, and then try and go delve a little bit deeper into some of the more profound uh, concepts around the sugya. So um, Tana Rabbanon says the Gemara um, had sod chilozen v'apoitzoi ein chayav ela achas. If one um, hunts a uh, chilozen, um, traps a chilozen rather, so strapping on Shabbos is a uh, melacha. Um, and one uh, injures it as a, in order to extract the uh, um, liquid, the dam chilozen, for the purpose presumably of making techelas, of dark, creating a dye. One is only chay of one malacha. And Rabbi Huda says chay shtaim shom Rabbi Huda oim a bechal disha. So we have a, a Gemara that tells us that p'siyah is bechal disha. Um, disha, which we've already met, is the malacha of threshing. Um, threshing involves extracting the grain from the husk, and we therefore learn out that any extraction of food from its um, shelter, or indeed any extraction of a desirable object from its um, encasing, is the malacha of dosh. And therefore, here, where I want the chilozen and I extract it from the, I want the dumb chilozen and I extract it from the chilozen, that's the malacha of disha. Or moreover, my time with Rabbanon, why would it be that the Rabbanon don't think of for disha? Kasavri ein disha elo ligdule kaka. Disha is only for that which grows from the ground. So I want to use this as a, a very brief opportunity to do Chazara on the Sugya in Ein Gimel Omad Beis, um, because the Sugya in Ein Gimel Omad Beis um, discussed a similar principle of Disha, of, of Gedule Kaka, of Malachas which need uh, Gedule Kaka. Um, and Tosfus on that Sugya also referenced our Gemara. Because the Gemara spoke about mafarik, um, mafarik was dismantling things, um, and Tosus went into the discussion of mafarik and dosh, and whether dosh only applies to gedule kaka, and the question of cholev for Shabbos, milking on Shabbos, in which you extract the milk from the uh, cow, from the udder of the cow, whether this is also an example of dosh, and uh, that led to a whole uh, a whole discussion around this, and Tosus quoted Al Gemara there. Um, he referenced uh, Al Gemara, in which Al Gemara is a source that Disha is only with um, Kudule Karaka. So, um, just as a little bit of Chazara, um, when it came to Imur, when it comes to gathering uh, um, uh, uh, um, um, sheaves, which the Gemara referenced in Ein Gimel on base in the context of harvesting salt. Um, which the Gemara considered the possibility that this was Imur, that this was uh, harvesting. Um, the Gemara also brought up the possibility of um, ein, of it only being in Gedule Karka. And um, at the time there, it appeared to be a machlokus between Rava and Abaya, whether Imur only applies to Gedule Karka or not, because Rava said you are Chayev for harvesting um, salt from salt uh, pans, from salt evaporation. And Abaya said, you're not, because Imur is only with Gedule Karka. So there's a general discussion at this point about where this principle of Gedule Karka comes from. Why should it be that um, only um, some uh, Malachas are with Gedule Karka and others are not? Why should it be that um, some malachas need to uh, only apply to things which grow from the ground and others don't? And the broad halachic principle that we said then, so just to remind you in order to understand where this concept of Gedule Kaka comes from, is that there's a shift at some point as one works one's way through the 11 malachas which are needed in order to produce bread. So the first 11 malachas in the list are sidura de pas, they are the bread manufacturing malachas, which are expanded not just to mean bread baking, but all food production. Um, and they start off out in the field. 
um, with plowing and sowing, and they finish off in the kitchen with bishul and afia and the like. Now, at some point, they shift from being primarily agricultural malachas to being primarily kitchen malachas. And the question is, at what point that shift occurs? So choresh, zorea are clearly malachas that take place out in the field and are to do with gedule karaka, things that grow in the ground. Bishul, cooking in the kitchen, clearly um, is a kitchen-based malacha, and therefore there shouldn't be a reason why growing in the ground is a determinant of what's included or not included in the malacha. And the question is, at what point this shifts? So imor, which is gathering the sheaths together, and dosh, which is um, threshing and so on, are these primarily um, kitchen, are these primarily um, field-based malachas, in which case it would only be kudole kaka, or are they food production malachas, in which case they would apply to all food. So that which takes place clearly in the field and can only be in the field, like choresh and zarea, clearly kudole kaka. That which takes place in the kitchen, clearly food manufacture. At what point it shifts when the sheaves are already detached from the ground and uh, are now being gathered and threshed, whether these are have shifted to being food manufacture, in which case it would also apply to things which don't grow in the ground or not, is, um, is, is debatable. So this is one machlokus that takes place. A second set of, of arguments is how we define guduli karka. And again, you will remember from Tosfus in Ein Gimel on the base, the possibility that animals should be defined as gudule karka because it depends what we mean by growing from the ground. If we mean growing from the ground in the sense of um, a seed sprouting from the ground, then clearly plants and fruits are gudule karka, and animals are not gudule karka. If one means um, sustaining oneself from the ground, growing and uh, drawing life from the ground, but in that sense, maybe animals are also gudule karka because they eat um, grass and uh, other things, and this is how they and fruit, and this is how they survive, and therefore they may be kedule karka in that sense. Um, Tosus brings a reference to this idea from the halachas of Maisa Shani, um, in which one takes fruit which has grown in one's field, and if one can't bring the fruit to your shlime, one can redeem the fruit, transfer the kedusha, the fruit onto the coins, take the coins up to your shlime, and buy their food to eat in your shlime. What food can you buy? Um, well, the Gomorrah's Doriusha has to be things which are. Um, come from the ground, and the Gemara includes in that even um, uh, um, animals. So with, in some respect, animal life is good kaka. Nonetheless, um, whether with respect to Hilchus Shabbos, that is the correct definition of good kaka, remains a um, debate. Well, quick, very quickly, can I ask you, in, are we saying that the other extreme, say you heated up um, something that's still growing in the ground, that the malacha of bishul wouldn't apply? Because... Um, no, I wouldn't say that because bishul is fundamentally a food manufacturer malacha. The state of the food, whether the food is um, growing still from the ground or not, would, uh, would not be relevant to that because for bishul, we don't care about its relationship to the ground. It's, it's become too detached conceptually from the ground for it to be a, a relevant halachic feature. Right. Um, so th this was the discussion over there. The discussion found expression particularly in, in the context of Cholev, because Tosis' question is, Cholev is milking a cow. A cow is not Gedule Kaka, arguably, and yet Cholev is Mishum Dosh, Mishum Mafarik, and uh, Mafarik is a told of Dosh, of threshing. How can that be the case if you don't view a cow as Gedule Kaka? Now, one of the important sources that Tosis referenced is Al Gemara, because Chilozen is a creature, an animal of sorts, Nonetheless, the Gemara clearly says it's not called Gedule Karka, and that's why, according to Rava, Dosh wouldn't apply to it. In which case, our Gemara would seem to be a proof that with respect to Hilchah Shabbos, animals are not considered Gedule Karka. Tosus references a possible distinction, and this is a distinction that, that uh, is made by some of the Rishonim, that a fish, a dog, sea life are different to animal life. A cow may be Gedule Karka, and therefore milking a cow could be included in Dosh. However, um, uh, a sea creature which lives in the sea certainly wouldn't be viewed as Gedule Karka. This is again um, a possibility that Tosis flags and Tosis rejects. So um, I'm not saying this as, as Chazorah for the context of Gedule Karka. Point number one, where does the idea of Gedule Karka come from? 
it's it's because there's this transition being made from field malachas to food production malachas as one works through food production, and what point that transition occurs. And secondly, the debate about the parameters of Gadol Kaka. First of all, could it include animal life? And secondly, if it does include animal life, would that exclude um, aquatic animal life, fish life, aquatic animal life? So this is the uh, the second debate. The third debate, which is is slightly more connected to our sugya, is um, the issue of the relationship between others and told us. Because if you remember, there was this very um, uh, interesting uh, point made by Rabbi Ram ben Harambam. Uh, without going into the details, the Rambam was attacked for saying a bunch of mutually inconsistent things, including that um, Choyleiv is a tolder of Dosh, and uh, in which case you would expect the principle of Gedule Kaka to apply to it, because the Rambam Paskins that Dosh only applies to Gedule Kaka, and the Rambam also doesn't view animals as Gedule Kaka. So these three things would be incompatible. You can't say that Dosh only applies to Gedule Kaka, and say that Choyleiv is a tolder of Dosh, and say that Choyleiv is Chayev, and say that animal life is not called Gedule Kaka. Something has to give. You can't claim that uh, extracting milk from an animal is Chayev Mishum Dosh, when Dosh is only Gedule Kaka. Something's gone wrong over here. So Raman Raman responds with astonishment. He's astounded. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. No one said that Choyleiv is Dosh. All we said was that Choyleiv is a tolder of Dosh told us don't have to have the same rules as the others. And this, again, was a discussion that we spoke about before, the relationship between told us and others. Before one learns Masechus Shabbos, one thinks that told us somehow emerge from the Av. Once one learns Masechus Shabbos, one understands that told us are really separate categories of Malacha. They're separate types of Malacha. They're simply categorized within the family of the Av. But families have many members. Being a member of a family doesn't mean one is the same thing, it's identical. And therefore we should think of the 39 others Malachas as 39 families of Malachas, which are grouped together, but they're not simply other examples of Malacha. So Choyleiv isn't an example of Dosh or a type of Dosh, it's its own Malacha, which is a told of Dosh. So really, if someone asks you how many Malachas are prohibited on Shabbos, the answer is, you know, several hundred. Um, these are categorized into 39 families of Malachas. So says Rabbi Raman Ramam, and um, therefore he's astounded, he's confused by the questioner. Um, if I say that um, uh, a father in a family is, is red-headed, is a gingy, is ginger-headed, um, you can't ask the question, when I saw his son and he's not ginger-headed. These are two different members of a family of Malachas, 39 families of Malachas, but these are separate uh, Malachas, and Av and Atolda are not synonymous. So said Rabbi Raman Rambam. Now, um, this leads us to an interesting point over here, because the Gemara assumes that um, that Hapitzea Chilozen would be potter for um, Gedule Karka, um, even though one might wonder whether Hapitzea Chilozen is a Av or a Tolda. Um, after all, how can the principle, how can the Gemara assume that the principle of Dosh only be doing, being with Gedule Karka applies to the Chilozen case? And I think the answer to this question is very beautiful and also really found in Rabbi Raman Rambam. Because the first point that, uh, that arises from Rabbi Raman Rambam, again, Chazor on Ein Gimel on base. In Ein Gimel on base, we saw a bunch of Malachas where the Gemara said that Malacha A is Mishum Malacha B. Um, and it listed many, many Malachas like that. For example, it says, I'm just going back to my Ein Gimel on base. Um, uh, so there it says they all won malacha, sowing and planting and uh, pruning, these all engender growth, and therefore they are malach achas. Then the Gemara says, for example, um, and plowing and uh, digging and so on are all one malacha. So we have to check the vocabulary of uh, the Gemara when it talks about how it describes different malachas and the language that is used. Here, the Gemara says the discussion is whether p'tsia is b'chlal disha, whether p'tsia is included in disha, whether it's b'chlal, it's included in disha. Now, what exactly does this language mean? Does this language mean that it, it's an av, it's, a, it's part of the av of dosh, or does this language mean that it is a, um, a tolder of dosh, this isn't um, entirely clear in the language of the um, of the of the Gemara. Now, Rabbi Raman Rambam, in this very same piece, defines the difference between um, 
the av and the tolda of dosh. What defines something as dosh and what defines something as a tolda of dosh? And he says um, that dosh is when the malacha of dosh is when the entity exists already before you trash it. It is merely um, encased and enclosed in something. However, where you bring something new into existence, then this is a separate malacha. This is a tolder of dosh, referred to as mafarik, which means um, dismantling or the like. So um, if you merely separate something which is already in existence and it's covered, then that would be dosh. However, if you bring something new into existence, which is Im immersed in it, then it would be the told of dosh, which is referred to as um, uh, mafarik or something else. Now, sometimes this difference can be clear and obvious, and sometimes it can be a little bit uh, conceptual. So, for example, when you bite into an apple, there is no visible juice. Um, an apple is a, it, it appears to us as a solid body. When you squeeze it, you can extract apple juice from it. So arguably, in that case there, this isn't the Av of Dosh, unlike a grain which is encased in a casing, and therefore this is the Av of Dosh, which is you break the grain out of its casing, and that's how you extract it. In the case of extracting juice from an apple, um, or even an orange for that matter, which is where there is little pockets of juice, um, this is creating or bringing into existence some new juice that wasn't there previously. So we use the same language to extract juice from a fruit, to um, uh, milk um, milk from a cow, and to extract a grain from its casing. But Roman Ramam is pointing out that there's different, these, are, these are different. In one case, the grain is already there, and then it's in existence, it's just covered. In the other case, I'm, I'm extracting in a manner in which I'm bringing something new into existence. And he suggests this is the dividing line between the Av and the Tolda. Now, what is the relationship of bodily fluids to the body within which they are found? Now, in a sense, this is a conceptual question, not just a biological question. Um, blood, for example, you could argue the blood is um, the end. It's already in existence. It's merely encased within the body itself. Or you could argue it's not encased in the body. It's so integral to the functioning of life that it is part of the body. That means to say that it's true that there is separate visible blood pre-extraction, but it doesn't have its own significance as a separate entity um, which stands alone, but it is part of the body until it is extracted, at which point it becomes into existence as a separate entity. And how one would define this term would um, decide whether this is the Av Malacha of Dosh or the Tolda of um, somebody else, perhaps Mufarik or the like. Now the Gemara refers to these two possibilities and several times in Shas it discusses whether we should view the liquid encased in a body as mifkad pocket, as um, the root of the word mifkad pocket is like a picardon, a uh, um, an entity. With, a picardon is a um, a deposit. When you deposit something into something else, it doesn't merge into the same ownership category. It's merely deposited. So if I um, deposit a pledge, a uh, a mushkin, um by by uh, at a with a lender who lends it to me um, um uh, what's it called when you when you pawn something when you um uh, deposit a pledge as a guarantee it doesn't enter into the financial domain of the recipient of the pledge it remains a picodon that means it remains an independent entity so mifkad pocket it, it derives by the way from uh, a biblical Hebrew word um vayifkad for example in the readings of Rosh Hashanah we talk about Hashem pocket sorrow Hashem visited sorrow in order to review the issue of Sarah's child, childlessness and so on. So this is the word pokad. So uh, pokad means to visit in biblical Hebrew, which then becomes a pikadon, <clears throat> um, which is something which is deposited and then is used in this discussion to determine whether blood, for example, is mifkad pocket. Is it an independent entity deposited within the body that has its own separate status pre its extraction? Or is it mivla bola? Is it absorbed in other part of the same entity as the body and only becomes an independent entity when it is extracted? And then we'll discuss this um, with the relationship between fruit juice and fruits and uh, many other halachic uh, scenarios. And it's very hard actually to determine what criteria the Gemara is using to determine this fact, whether it's looking at biology or functionality or some combination of the two. Now, Tosfos tells us in the bottom of the Ein Heyom uh, 
Aleph, and forgive me that I'm going um, a little bit out of order. The dam chilozen haroyin tzviya mifkad pocket. The dam chilozen, the blood of chilozen, which is used for dyeing, should be viewed as mifkad pocket, as deposited, not mivla bola. Now, the reason for this um, may well be that even though we refer to dam chilozen, it would appear that dam is a generic term for other bodily fluids too. And the dam chilozen is not necessarily the regular, what we would call biologically um, blood. It's not the regular blood which is um, in, a, in a, a body, but rather it's a, a one of the secretions of this chilozen creature. And this is therefore mifka pocket. It should be viewed as a secretion which is contained and deposited within the body rather than mifla bola, rather than being its own, uh, rather than being part of the body itself. Um, so says Tosis. Now, if we go with that school of thought, then we understand that based on Rabbi Ramban Aramban's criteria, in fact, the Ptsiyas Chilozen, the extraction of the, 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 the um, dying fluids from the Chilozen, is not the bringing into existence of something new, which might be the case with extracting apple juice from an apple, but rather it's more comparable to extracting the grain from the casing. The, the dumb chilozen was um, uh, encased within the chilozen and have to break open the casing, which sadly from the chilozen's point of view will injure or kill it. But from the dumb point of view, it's merely removing and encasing rather than extracting and bringing into existence something which is mivelous, something which is absorbed. In brief, just to summarize this discussion, um, the third point to remind ourselves from Ein Hei Omad, Ein Gimel Omad Base is that Rabbi Roman Aramam tells us there's a difference between the Av of Dosh, about which the rule of Gedoli Kaka applies, and the Toldos, about which the rule of Gedoli Kaka do not apply. Um, the relationship, whenever the Gemara tells us that Malachas are because of other Malachas, we need to examine the language with care. Here the Gemara says Michlal, it's included in, and Rabbi Ram and Aramba may well interpret that to mean not that it's a Tolda, but that it is part, literally part of the Av. How can one say such a thing if milking is considered a Tolda and if... Um, uh, and so on. Why should removing the dam chilozen be considered an av? The possible answer is because the distinction between av and tolda is: are you extracting something which is merely encased, or are you bringing out something which is absorbed? And milk may be viewed as absorbed, whereas dam chilozen, Tosis at least says, is viewed as mifka pocket, and therefore um, that would be a distinction between the two. And therefore, extracting dam chilozen would be the av, not the tolda. Um, so this is uh, a bit of on, on, on base, which I think is important for us to uh, remember. Um, could I ask about, I'm not quite, I didn't quite understand how this answers the issue of, of Rav Avram Ben Arambam about uh, if, if Gedule Disha is only relevant for Gedule Karaka, even if the blood of the Chilazon is Mifkad Pakid, it's still, at the end of the day, not a Gedule Karaka, right? Correct. And, and therefore, that would be the answer as to why um, why Dosh is relevant over here. Our question was, how can the Rava say that your potter for um, extracting the blood of Chilozen, uh, because it's good, not Gedule Kaka, um, surely Rabbi Raman Aramam taught us that the need for Gedule Kaka is the Av, which is um, part of the production manufacturing process, which is field linked, and therefore Ovois, which aren't gedule kaka or exempt from the malacha, but holders which are removed from being part of the, ag the field type agriculture production don't need gedule kaka. So we have a contradiction against Rabbi Ram and Aram, uh, a proof against Rabbi Ram and Aram's theory, because here we're dealing with chilozim, which is very different to extracting grain grains from the husk. And nonetheless, um, he says it would be, nonetheless, the Gemara says it only applies to gedule kaka. So we have a, a proof against his stance. The answer is that even though superficially, the suggested answer is that even though superficially um, extracting dumb chilozen from a chilozen seems very different to extracting a grain from a husk, conceptually, if tosis, if we go with tosis as mifka pocket, it may well be an av rather than a uh, tolda. Wait, which of? Literally dosh, the av of tisha. No, I'm not following, sorry. I thought that, again, I, I thought that dosh the of would only apply to Gedule Karka. So even Correct. though- Correct. And therefore it can't be the of, that's why Rava says you're exempt for Tisha because it's not Gedule Karka. Wh which Malacha could it potentially be? 
would it be the, are we analyzing whether it's the Av of Disha or is it the told of Mufariq, of, of dismantling? So I assumed when I learned the Gemara it would be the tolda of dismantling, in which case, why is the Gedore Kaka relevant? Why, how can the Rav say you're exempt from it because it's not Gedore Kaka? The answer is no, that the suggested malacha would be, would not be extracting in the dismantling sense, but would be threshing. It would be um, removing a cover to, to remove something which is already there, in which case it would be dosh, not mafarik. And when it comes to dosh, it has to be Gedore Kaka. Except you, in the quotation you've given us from uh, Ram Ben Rambam, he says that a tolda could either be considered gedule karka or it not. I mean, you know, right at the end there, he says, um, he said, "Hamafarek shehu tolda dedash yesh no be gedule karka for shelo be gedule karka." That means to say the malach applies about something with, with both to objects which are gedule karka and which are not, M meaning. Um, you can't say that the malacha of Mafarik, the Tolda Mafarik, would not apply to something which is not Gedule Kaka, or to remove the double negative. You can't say that the Tolda of Mafarik only applies to Gedule Kaka. Why? Because it's not a field malacha. It's not the Av of Dosh, it's its own Tolda of Mafarik. There's, there's no logic or reason why it should only apply to Gedule Kaka. Why should the malacha only apply to Gedule Kaka? So he explains, because these are malachas which are, are part of the field stage of food production. But if it's, 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 if it's a tolda, it's not a field malacha at all. Not Gedule Kaka malacha at all. Now we have evidence against Rabbi Ram ben Ramam's theory from Chilazan. It's a terrible problem. Because Chilazan, Rav says, needs to be Gedule Kaka. But surely extracting blood of a Chilazan is a tolda, not an av. I'm suggesting that no, Rabbi Ram ben Ramam would argue it's an av because Mifka pocket. Because it's it's it's... It, it's it's good a case pocket, rather than bringing into existence. Ah. Um, okay, we've we run out of time. I'll, I'll just mention one other point very briefly. I wasn't going to go into this, but since there's this sort of one minute left, I'll, I'll just say one other very short point. Um, there's a, a significant halachic discussion, which I'm not going to go into now, about whether um, dosh applies with a with a dead body or only with a um, a live body. Um, if you injure a dead body, you bruise it or extract blood from a dead body, could you be chayev for, um, for dosh? And a very important place, the Prima Godim, wants to prove from here that if you injure a dead body, you're chayev, because the Gemara seems to say you're chayev for dosh, even though the, um, the chilozen dies or is dead in, in, once you do so. Now, there's a lot to analyze in this proof of the Prima Godim, including exactly when the Chilazan dies in the um, extraction process. Um, all I would point out is that when you wound a body, Chovel, when you bruise a body, which is also a form of dosh and cause it to bleed, there presumably it is the tolda because it's bleeding. Whereas with Chilazan, as we said, it is the Av because the liquid of Chilazan dye is Mifka pocket as opposed to regular blood, which isn't. So it may well be that you, you need to be careful with the proofs that you're bringing, whether you're risking uh, cross comparisons between an Av and a Tolda. So um, when you cause blood to leave the body, that may be the Tolda of Dosh, because the blood was absorbed into the body. It's halakhic considered Mivla Bolia, absorbed. When you remove Chilozen blood from the body, that may be the Av, because Mifka pocket, as Tosus explains. Okay, we'll stop there for today, and Emir Hashem, next week, we will plunge into the very, very um, thought issue of, um, not next week, Tuesday, I apologize, of um, what the exemption of Miss Asik is and what that means, and the machlokas between Rashi and Tosas. I wish you Thank all you a, a much, good day. Gareth. Thank you so much, as always. Uh, uh, Thank, Thank you. Thank you.